Welcome to the Easter gouache tutorial. If you ever wanted to master gouache medium, there's no better way than folk art. It's the easiest, most fun way to understand the qualities of gouache, explore different possibilities of manipulating paint, and learn some useful tricks that are only possible with this beautiful, creamy, opaque color. I will teach you my all-time favorite folk art strokes that I've learned in Ukraine. The style is called Petrikivka, and it is one of the most popular styles for for my commercial art projects, I incorporate it into my Canadian coins, book covers, and all sorts of other art. We will be using three pigments. I picked ultramarine and magenta for colorful parts and white for everything else. You will find that permanent white is the most useful pigment for any gouache work because you can mix it with any other color to make it creamier and lighter. And you can also use pure white for beautiful details. In terms of the brushes, any small round brush will work with gouache which is great because we don't need anything expensive so I'll use an old retired round sable brush in size 3 for so-called transition strokes on petals and leaves and we're gonna need a smaller brush I'm gonna use an old round squirrel brush in size 2 for more delicate strokes and smaller flowers now if you're ready with your colors let's get started the first stroke we're gonna practice is called transition stroke meaning we're gonna use two colors to create a beautiful beautiful transition in one stroke. So I'm gonna squeeze my magenta in two spots. One will be for mixing with white. The other little blob is for our transition stroke. I'm gonna keep it pure magenta. This one on top, let me just mix up a lighter version of pink and then I'm gonna dip just the tip of the brush, just the pointy part, into pure magenta. So what you want to have as a result is a fully loaded brush, fully loaded with lighter color and a little bit of pure darker color on the tip so that when you put down the stroke it looks kind of like this. Now I'm going to reload my brush and do it again and you'll find that as you play around it all depends on the brush consistency of your gouache but every stroke will be unique which is actually what you want to have. This is the beauty of folk art. It's always very unique, very specific to your tools and the way you position your hand. In the end, because we have so many repeated elements all together, it always looks charming and beautiful. Play around with it and see what works. To finish it off, let's just clean up the bottom edge with pure pink and we are ready to move on to the next part. These are traditional Ukrainian folk art drop shape strokes and they're called that because they look like little drops. Relatively easy to make. If you have a round brush with a very defined tip, you start by placing the tip down and then you drag it out while pressing your brush a little bit. Ideally, if your brush is very soft and very round, you will get a drop shape just by placing one stroke. This brush is not particularly suitable for this, but it still works on the tip, which is the most important part. And then as I press it, it's not thick enough for my liking, so I double down a little bit and help myself by creating additional volume at the bottom of each drop. And I'm just placing them around an imaginary dot, the center of the flower, trying my best to keep it inside the little outer circle. It's not always 100% accurate, but it doesn't need to be. Again, folk art is all about small imperfections that make it unique and beautiful. And so I'm just going to continue creating these small flowers going around the center of each flower and my tip here is to rotate your paper to make it easier for yourself to go around the center of the flower. Let's finish these small flowers and move on to our larger flower, work on more transition strokes. For our next set of transition strokes on a larger petals, I want to create another duo that's different from our original pink. So I'm gonna use ultramarine 
ultramarine and just like we did with magenta I'm gonna mix a little bit of that ultramarine with my permanent white on the side load the brush make sure that the original pure ultramarine mixture is watery enough so I can dip my brush and start painting these larger strokes trying to build five big petals I always start painting the outer strokes of the petal and then inner ones you can play around a little bit and actually dip your brush into the original pure magenta and paint inner strokes of each petal with magenta on the tip of your brush it's going to create some continuity with the petals that we did on top it's really fun and every stroke that you dip into a more pure pigment will create a beautiful transition with your lighter ultramarine blue and white mixture you may want to turn your paper around if it's easier for you to finish the right hand side working from a different angle I'm gonna try and do it from the same angle but you can see I have a glove so I'm kind of protecting my paper from smudges still I have to place my finger down for balance and you can see as I'm moving along my transition strokes are becoming more defined I think I'm simply dipping a little bit deeper into my ultramarine and I'm gonna do a couple of transition strokes with magenta in the center to make your leaves the easiest thing is to start with the very top stroke the one that's on the tip of the leaf and then follow along using that long initial stroke as sort of the main vein just painting around it you can see the first stroke is the longest and runs from the tip of the leaf all the way down and then I'm working around it first on the left side then on the right starting a little bit on the outside and then dragging my brush towards the center and down along this center stroke the very first one that we painted every time I dip my brush into pure ultramarine so I have that beautiful transition each stroke is visible and it's visible a lot more because we have that darker color on the tip of our brush so you can actually follow with your eyes the direction of your stroke as you've painted it and it creates a nice sense of movement it follows that organic shape and in the end every leaf is unique but it has the same logic we can come back later add a little bit of detail on the inside but already you can see a very interesting sort of organic shape that mimics typical structure of the leaf the petals we've painted on the larger flower are dry so now let's put some solid color in the middle I'm gonna use my pure magenta and just cover it all keep it dark so there's enough contrast now we can do the border very simple solid coverage using our ultramarine and I'm gonna add a little bit of white once I'm happy with that mixture I don't want it to be too light but I also don't want to use pure ultramarine because it's a little bit too harsh so somewhere in between the pure ultramarine from the tube and the lighter mixture we've used for the petals and leaves cover it all being mindful of any inconsistencies in blue to white ratio continue all the way to the left and up being particularly careful around the edges eventually as you've seen in the final version we will have beautiful details all around the border using white gouache so we have one last set of transition strokes and these will be in the center of the flower so just make sure that that dark pink or whatever color you've used for the center of the flower that dark color is completely dry and I'm gonna load up my brush with a mixture of magenta and white so I'm gonna make a pretty light mixture and I'm gonna dip my brush this time into pure white so I want that transition stroke to have high contrast with the center of the flower and I want it to be nice and round so notice again with every stroke I paint I dip my brush into white 
just the tip but enough to pick up some color so that I get a nice visible transition and if I need to double down or make my strokes thicker I do it again the center is done clean up any white space making sure that the outline of our center element is nice and round and the edge is smooth for this part we will need a darker blue I'm gonna mix it with a little tiny bit of white and we're gonna do the stems and all the small details again using traditional folk art strokes watch closely as I'm gonna drag my brush creating these elongated strokes they're called grass you can see that they're quite similar to the drop shape stroke in the sense that I start just with the tip of my brush I drag it out by pressing it making my stroke thicker but this time instead of ending with a drop shape I lift my brush again while I continue dragging it out sometimes curving it and so what you get as a result is this sort of beautiful organic shape that starts thin and ends thin but in the center in the middle it's quite thick and you can add smaller drops to fill up the space or you can use it a little bit more sparingly it's entirely up to you this is really fun and there are no mistakes here so I highly encourage you to grab all your small brushes here just try all the different ones as long as they're around you should have fun playing with different shapes and different sort of effects make them thick make them thin curve them just follow your intuition and if you want to fill up white space this is typically my preference because I, I like to fill everything with little details then you can add smaller droplets throughout quick tip here you may want to make your mixture a little bit more watery compared to what we had in the beginning just so that your brush loads more and you can carry more paint and that way you'll be able to make your strokes a lot longer without running out of paint the method is always the same start with the tip of your brush very thin and drag it out while pressing your brush down then lift it if you want to see that nice thin curvy tip and it's the repetition that is the essence of folk art so you can see here with very basic one color one stroke technique we're creating a beautiful variety of shapes to fill up the white space next step is to add a little bit of detail on our main flower and once again it's the same drop shape stroke but we're gonna try and organize it in such a way that the base of your stroke always reaches the border between the large pink center and the blue background petals so you can see I'm sort of starting on the surface of the blue petal and I continue all the way until I reach the pink area kind of looks like spider legs when you're done going around that pink center you can clean up the edge just with the tip of your brush and now you can see all of a sudden that center stands out that much more we have a lot more contrast if you want and this is entirely optional and again completely depends on your style and how detailed you want to get you can do a reverse thing with pure magenta or pure pink pure red whichever you're using and outline the pink strokes in the center of the flower again ending very carefully just on the edge between the blue and the pink parts another fun technique that is best suitable for gouache and I absolutely love it you may have seen me use this on some Christmas compositions featuring snow with white gouache but here I'm gonna go for my magenta dip the back of another brush and leave a few small circles little berries 
just to spruce it up and add some continuity in my palette because it's looking a little bit blue all over so I'm gonna add those little dots again another classic Ukrainian folk art element and we can move on to the next part and I'm gonna turn my flower upside down and add a few rows using white with this tiny brush and I'm gonna do one kind of continuous up on top and then for the pink petals I'm gonna do smaller drops creating semicircle shapes and this is why I love white gouache because you can cover any color any dark color or if you're painting on colored paper you can create these details on any colored surface now let's go back to making white dots. I'm gonna put a row of them using white gouache right in the center of the flower. Another small trick, if you don't dip your brush every time, then every subsequent dot will be a little bit smaller. So I'm creating a nice sort of transition from a very thick dot all the way out to smaller dots and then switch to a smaller maybe not a brush handle but a pencil and dip it in my white gouache make a few smaller dots in the center of the flower and as i mentioned i sometimes use this pencil into white gouache technique for my snow even in watercolor work last step one more traditional very classic eastern european folk art motif the border and so you will find these very often not just on easter eggs but on decorative boxes any other sort of applications on wood there's always a beautiful border with a simple repetitive design that completes the composition and this is why initially we've painted this thick blue strip all around our edge Egg. Now let's take some white gouache and your smallest brush and I decided to go with just simple curvy shapes that repeat all around the border but every shape I do I will curve in the opposite direction so you can see I start on top of the previously painted one I drag it out and then I curve it in the opposite side so all in all the result will be this sort of wavy line and there's a lot of symbolism attached to it especially when you find these on easter eggs but any other eastern european folk art these are waves they represent sort of the passage of time and you can do them in a variety of different ways you can connect them you can curve them more you can make them end with a thicker sort of drop shape round tip entirely up to you i'm just following along the border and if you look closely not one stroke is the same they're all unique they're all sort of imperfect and i'm gonna double down on some of them maybe connect them as i mentioned just to make that line a little bit more pronounced and finish by going all the way to where i started the trickiest part usually is to calculate how wide and how long you want them to be so that you can end in a cohesive way already our border is looking quite more festive and I can't help myself I'm gonna add a few drop shape strokes because I have a little bit of room so at the base of each curvy line I'm gonna try to add two maybe you can choose to just add a few dots or even maybe red berries whatever you like I'm just showing you an option using the same brush stroke that we've used throughout and my preference is always to fill up the space so that's why maybe I'm going a little bit overboard but I like this look and I find that in general doing folk art is a great confidence booster because no matter what you choose it always looks so charming and complete and really reflects the personality of the artist so I'm just gonna follow around at as many as I can and we'll finish with one last element one last set of dots I'm gonna try to fit them in on the opposite side of the little droplet strokes that I just did so I'm gonna again grab the back of my brush and 
try to put them all around the border. You can use a different color if you want. You can use pink. You don't need to use white. And this will be the final element of our egg. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I've shared all my favorite folk art strokes and I hope this will be something new and unique in your visual vocabulary. Play around with gouache, use all the brushes you have, find out what kind of beautiful strokes and organic shapes you can come up with. Thank you for watching and painting with me.